Welcome to Mikon's hardware. During the last months it was really hot out here and I didn't have any chances to record a video because I had to keep my windows open and use an external cooling for myself. Here I have a, a portable fan for myself which I was using to stay chill. Right now the air temperatures are slowly going down and I am attempting to record this short video. At the beginning of the month I have ordered a bunch of different and interesting hardware stuff for my YouTube videos from Taobao for the total amount of more than 1000 euros. Unfortunately Chinese did Chinese again, they have provided me wrong bank payment credentials and my payment didn't go through. First I was asked to wait a little longer, a little longer, and in the end it turned out that the payment was rejected by the recipient bank. All in all, I have lost some money paying the bank transfer commissions, my thousand euros are still somewhere in the wild and I'm trying to get them back, but what's more crucial that I have lost the time while waiting for the hardware to arrive. Most of the interesting items I wanted to buy from Taobao I was able to find on AliExpress and reorder it, but the time has been lost and I have to wait again for the items to arrive to me. Maybe they will come in two weeks, maybe they will come in two months, you never know with AliExpress delivery. Thus, it means I don't have many interesting items to do videos about, and in this video I'm going to talk about this little graphics card, which is NVIDIA Quadra K4000. Let's start with the graphics card specification. NVIDIA Quadra K4000 comes with 3GB of GDDR5 memory, it uses GK106 GPU die with 776 CUDA cores. The clock frequency of the GPU is 810 MHz and the memory frequency is 1404 MHz. The card is a single slot design, it has two DisplayPort outputs, one DVI output, and for the power it uses single 6-pin PCI Express connector, the power consumption is supposed to be around 80 Watt under load. Quadra K4000 uses Capral architecture, which is very old by now, and NVIDIA has stopped supporting this architecture, which means there will be no new driver updates for the Capral GPUs. Capral architecture also means that the graphics card does not support all the latest and greatest DirectX 12 API features, which results into some games are simply not able to run on this graphics card because the graphics card does not support required API features. To test my Quadra K4000 I decided to use a test bench which I had assembled at that time and it was engineering sample of Intel Core i9 11900QVYE. Thus we have 8 cores, 16 threads, clock frequency from 4GHz to 4.5GHz depends on the load, DDR4 2800 CL12 32GB, 250GB SSD for system drive, 2TB SSD for games which shall be more than enough to put 100% load on this entry-level GPU or rather old dinosaur GPU. Let's start with the GPU overclocking. The same as NVIDIA GTX and NVIDIA RDX, this NVIDIA Quadra K4000 can be overclocked using MSI Afterburner. Unfortunately, this particular sample is not great at overclocking at all. In my case, the graphics card was not stable with anything higher than 100MHz extra on the GPU die and 500MHz on the video memory. If I apply plus 150MHz on the GPU core, the system is not stable, sometimes the system crashes, sometimes the video drivers are crashing and the games are not playable. The same applies to the video memory. If I try to increase the clock frequency of the video memory to more than 500 MHz extra, I am getting artifacts on the screen and even though the system is stable, it is still unpleasant experience when you see some artifacted picture instead of the desired gaming picture. Maybe it would be possible to achieve better overclocking results if I would be able to increase voltage for the GPU core and for the video memory, but MSI Afterburner does not have such features. It is possible to adjust GPU core and video memory voltage by using a modified BIOS, but unfortunately it also makes no sense to use a modified BIOS because this tiniest single slot GPU cooler is barely enough to cool down this Quadra K4000 with a minimal overclock of 100 MHz. Okay, now let's take a look how this Quadra K4000 is performing in the modern titles with this mild overclock. Starting with Assassin's Creed Odyssey. To get any source of playable experience, I have to downscale the resolution to 720p and use the lowest graphical settings. 
With a such configuration, the gaming benchmark gives us 26 FPS on minimum and 36 FPS on average. I would say it is barely playable and if you really feel like playing the game and you do not have any other graphics card, it is possible to play Assassin's Creed Odyssey using Quadra K4000, but is far from pleasant. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, on the other hand, refused to start at all. This game requires the latest features of DirectX 12, which are not supported by Quadra K4000, thus the game simply rejects to start. Far Cry New Dawn is also barely playable. 720p, minimal graphical settings, built-in gaming benchmark, and we are getting 29 FPS on minimum, 38 FPS on average. It is barely playable, and if you really feel like playing the game and you do not have any other possibilities to get a better graphics card, K4000 will do it for completing the Far Cry New Dawn campaign. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege is a much more optimized game and some can even play it using the integrated Intel graphics. Here I am testing 1080p. With medium graphical settings we are getting minimum 39 FPS and 61 FPS on average, reducing the graphical quality to the lowest possible but keeping resolution at 1080p, we are getting 48 FPS on minimum and 67 FPS on average. As you can see, it is somehow playable, but the minimal FPS are dipping below 50, not even to mention 60 FPS. The last tested game will be Watch Dogs Legion, and even though this game is also using DirectX 12 API, it does not require the latest greatest DirectX 12 API features, thus it starts on Quadra K4000. To be able to somehow complete the benchmark without huge stutters, I had to use 720p, lowest graphical settings, reduced textures qualities, and even with such configuration I'm getting minimum 18 FPS and average 26 FPS. In this game Quadra K4000 is not able to reach even 30 FPS on average. These are somehow disappointing results for this aging Quadra K4000, and if you could probably do some gaming using the older and better optimized games such as CSGO, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, the original Modern Warfare, not the modern one, uh, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Age, Valorant and similar games are probably gonna be playable with this Quadra K4000, but the modern games are barely playable or absolutely unplayable with this GPU. It is uh, kind of sad and I was expecting to get something like Nvidia GTX 750 Ti level of performance, but we are not even getting that. Thus, I have decided to test one extra scenario or one extra use case where I thought Quadra K4000 could be useful. Let's say you have a graphics card such as NVIDIA GTX 1060, which is one of the most popular graphics cards on the market until today, and you want to connect a secondary monitor. The question is, if you connect the secondary monitor to your GTX 1060, or you add some kind of an extra GPU and connect your secondary monitor to Quadra K4000, for example. Will this impact your gaming performance? So in this scenario, I'm going to test the five tested games using NVIDIA GTX 1060 with and without Quadra K4000. The main monitor connected to GTX 1060 will be running the game, and the secondary monitor, which will be connected either to the 1060 or to the Quadra K4000, will be running a YouTube video and task manager. This is a pretty basic setup, and I was expecting to get some extra FPS when the secondary monitor is connected to the Quadra K4000. Unfortunately, it's not the case. As you can see on your screen, in all five tested games, FPS values were ever so slightly higher when using just NVIDIA GTX 1060. This is very sad, but it is what it is. Important to mention that adding an extra GPU into your system not only occupies an extra PCI Express slot, but it also consumes more electricity. Using NVIDIA GTX 1060 and Quadra K4000, my system was consuming around 220 Watt, and using just GTX 1060, my system was consuming around 205 Watt. Thus, the power consumption is increasing, and the FPS is slightly dropping or staying the same if you connect your secondary monitor to an additional graphics card, in this case it is Quadra K4000. 
With such disappointing results, I can see only two use cases when Quadra K4000 could be useful. First one is when you really badly need a graphics card and you can't get anything else except of a Quadra K4000. In that case, this GPU will probably hold you well for maybe a few months, maybe even a year, until you can find a good deal on a second-hand GDX960, for example, 970, or even the same 1060 that I had on this test. And the other use case is when you need some extra monitors. If your main graphics card is already populated or it simply does not support as many monitors as you want, then adding an extra Quadro K4000 could be a good option. The graphics card supports in total three extra monitors, two via display port connections and one through the DVI connector. I really tried to find a use case for this old graphics card because first, I like how it looks, and second, I really dislike to throw hardware which is still fully functional. Unfortunately though, as my tests show, this is a pretty useless piece of hardware and maybe I will put it onto my shelf behind myself, but we will see about it. For now though, that's all I can tell you about Quadra K4000. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting. Until the next time, bye-bye!